Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-Level Maths. Here we're looking at acceleration that's caused by gravity, so we can answer questions from exercise 9e. So, gravity. So we're going to start to project our particles vertically upwards, and there's a, there's a reaction due to gravity that's going to be pulling that particle back down to Earth. So gravity causes objects to fall towards Earth and on any other planet, but we'll come to that in a second. Acceleration caused by gravity is constant. We're ignoring air resistance at the moment. We're only working with a simple model. This means that acceleration will be the same regardless of the size of the object. So if you've got a 100 kilogram weight or a 1 kilogram weight, it's going to fall just as fast as the other one because there is no air resistance uh, on these objects. On Earth, acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. Uh, the decimal does carry on, but for A-level maths, uh, particularly the mechanics module, we're just going to use 9.8, correct two significant figures. Uh, I've seen questions where they can sometimes tell you to use the value 10, uh, sometimes use 10 at GCSE. I know in, as well that at physics A-level, you use 9.81, but just remember in maths A-level, 9.8 is what we're going to use all, generally all the time. When solving problems involving vertical motion, you must be careful to consider the direction. Gravity is always going to be acting downwards, so if your particle is being projected upwards and gravity is downwards, then that's effectively a negative acceleration. An object thrown downwards will accelerate as well at 9.8 metres per second squared. So it doesn't only slow objects down that have been thrown upwards, they'll also accelerate objects um, that continue going downwards and we have no um, limiting velocity either it's just going to continue to accelerate um, on and on and on and on. Uh, an object thrown upwards will have acceleration of minus 9.8. The time of flight is the length of time an object spends in the air. So this, this, this bit of terminology here may occur in a question that we'll see later. Uh, the speed of a projection is, is another name for the object's initial speed. Okay, so a bit of terminology there. So we've still got our SUVAT formulas, and A, if A is gravity, then we'll use 9.8. The letter that we tend to use for gravity is G. Okay, so a ball is projected vertically upwards from a point zero with a speed 12 meters per second, and we want to find the greatest height, total time the ball is in the air. So a diagram. Particle is going to go upwards until it reaches a maximum height. And at a maximum height, it's not going to have any more velocity. It's going to run out of velocity and will start to fall back downwards. So its greatest height always is when the velocity is equal to zero. So S we don't know. U is 12. V is the final velocity, which is zero. A, now given that we've set 12 uh, as a positive direction going upwards and gravity is going to be attracting downwards we have minus 9.8 on that diagram there and we don't know the time either. So part A looks for us to find the greatest height of the ball so we're looking for S in this case here. A bit of V squared equals U squared plus 2AS and rearrange your algebra to get your final answer of 7.4 metres. Um, something to bear in mind is that when you use 9.8, your answer is then only accurate to two significant figures because the value for acceleration due to gravity, g, has been approximated to two significant figures. So your answer is only approximate to two significant figures. So it could go to three, but it's not going to be as accurate. Uh, part b, the total time the ball is in the air. So we're working out t now. Um, but what we're going to think of is total time the ball is in the air. It's going to go upwards and then come back down again. Okay, so for the total time the ball is in the air, if it's come back down again and it's effectively where it started, then the displacement in that case is zero. So that's why we've got zero highlighted here. The displacement, if it goes up and then back down again to where it started, the displacement is the difference between starting position and final position which is zero. So use a bit of uh, S equals UT plus half AT squared. And zero should be one of your answers because it will be exactly where it was to start with, or 2.4 seconds. So it's 
takes 1.2 seconds to reach maximum height and 1.2 seconds to fall back downwards again. So the ball is in the air for a total time of 2.4 seconds. Alright, another question then. A book falls off uh, top of a bookshelf. The shelf is 1.4 metres above the ground. Find the time it takes to reach the floor and the speed at which it strikes the floor. So draw yourself a little diagram. Um, if it falls, then its starting velocity is zero. And it's going to have travelled 1.4 metres. Acceleration is going downwards, so we can set that equal to positive 9.8 in this case here. And t is unknown as well. So find the time it takes, so what other variables have we got? So it's a bit of half 80 squared. So find out what t is. Now t here, you can see t squared is 1.4 over 4.9. We're only going to take the positive route of this because it doesn't make sense to have gone back in time to have travelled 1.4 metres. Effectively, if you think about it, it would have travelled upwards by 1.4 metres at that time, but that, that doesn't make any sense. So your time here is 0.53. The next thing we need to do is find the speed at which the which the book hits the floor. So we can use that t equals 0.53 if we want to, but it'd probably be a bit more accurate as if, if we use the other letters that we had there. Use a bit of v squared equals u squared plus 2as, and we get v equals 5.2 metres per second. All right then, let's move on to, uh, to another question here. We have a ball that's projected upwards. Uh, from a point x, uh, it's moved 7 metres from above the ground uh, with an initial speed of 21 metres, projecting upwards. Find the time of flight of the ball. So what's going to happen here is the particle is going to be projected upwards and back down again, and it's going to have travelled past where it started, because it started 7 metres above the ground. Now, effectively, if we're taking upwards as positive here, its displacement is therefore going to be negative because it's effectively travelling backwards in the positive direction um, from where it started. So in this case here, when we plug in s, s is going to be minus 7 here, and that's a classic trick they'll use in exam type questions. Uh, u is our starting speed, 21. Acceleration due to gravity is minus 9.8 if we're setting upwards as positive for the whole question and t is unknown as well. So the question here is find the time of flight. So finding t here, so in this case we're going to get s equals ut plus half a t squared. Replace all those letters. You may have to solve a quadratic formula. In this case here, uh, you could probably plug that into your calculator. There's a quadratic solver mode, isn't there? Um, and we were going to get Use the formula, okay, use the formula if you want to. And we're going to get two answers, 4.6 or minus 0.3. Now, the minus 0.3 refers to if we were to go back in time and go downwards this way. Um, but we don't want that answer there. We're just going to take the positive answer that we get from that. So 4.6 seconds uh, to two significant figures. Okay, final example here. It's a pretty difficult question, um, but it is a, is a favourite of exam makers. So a particle is projected vertically upwards from a point zero with initial speed u, which is a greatest height 62.5 metres above the ground. Okay, not the final question. Um, find the speed of projection. So u is our starting speed, maximum height of 62.5 uh, if it reaches a maximum height, its velocity is therefore zero at that point. And its acceleration is obviously minus 9.8 because we've set upwards as our positive direction. So find the initial speed of projection. So v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Substitute in all the numbers. Rearrange to find u. Only take the positive value and we get 35. Okay, part B then, the total time for which the ball is 50 metres or more above the ground. So we'll put a little marker there at 50 metres. 
and we'll find the time at which it is exactly at that 50 meters. And we should get two values. We should get a quadratic that will give us two values. Uh, S equals ut plus half at squared. That will give us a quadratic formula. Use the values there. And we're going to get the first time which is 1.97, so it takes 1.97 seconds to reach this point here, and then if we carry on, it re takes 5.1686 seconds to reach this point here, so the total time that it's above that 50 meters there is the difference between those two values, which is 3.2 to two significant figures. Okay. Right. Final question now then. So we've got a ball A and it falls vertically from rest off the top of a 63 metre high tower. Um, at the same time as A begins, another ball B is projected vertically upwards from the bottom of the tower with an initial speed of 21 metres per second. The balls collide. Find the height at which this happens. So we've got a little diagram here of all of our relevant pieces of information, 63 metres high, 21 metres um, per second going up for ball B. This is going to be at rest. So what we need to do is we're going to effectively create two simultaneous equations and, and uh, yeah, solve them in a simultaneous way from the SUVAT formulas. So for ball A, it's traveling S1, we're going to use subscript 1, you could use an X here and a Y for the other variable here, we're going to use S1 and S2. Initial speed of U, uh, V is 0, it's traveling downwards, so we're going to take 8, 9.8 as our value for A. And T we don't know either, so we've effectively here got three unknowns and two knowns, um, so we're going to have to make simultaneous equations here with ball B. Now ball B is traveling upwards, with a distance of S2. Uh, initial speed of 21, final speed we don't know. Acceleration, now because we've set 21 to be the positive direction going upwards, we need this acceleration to be minus 9.8, and T we don't know either. So, for ball A, let's create a formula with S equals UT plus half AT squared in there. So in this formula here, we're not going to know what S is, and we don't know what uh, T is either. So we'll have to do our best with substituting in the formula. And we get S1 is 4.9 T squared. Now with ball B, use the same formula. And substitute in all the values, and we get 21 T minus 4.9 T squared. Now the positive 4.9t squared here is very useful for us to, um, to add these equations together now so that the 4.9t squareds cancel. So effectively we've got two simultaneous equations here now. If we add them together, uh, we've still got two un three unknowns in this formula here. It's S1 plus S2, these two added together here, and then these two sides of the equations here added together is 21t. Um, but what do we know about S1 plus S2? Well, we know the total distance of this tower is 63. So substitute in 63, and suddenly we can find T. Now, T is not our final answer. We know that it's now three meters, so three seconds after the balls have both been released. Find the height at which this happens. So substitute this into one of your formulas. Let's use S2 that would be the height above the ground. And we're going to get there 18.9 metres or 19 metres to two significant figures. OK, then. So, yeah, very difficult question, this one here, requiring you to make simultaneous equations out of your SUVAT formulas. There's a couple of questions on this in the exercise where you can have a go at this. All right then, so your turn to have a go at these two. I've ch chosen two quite basic questions here. Have a go at them, see how you get on. Pause the video. All right then, so question two here. Now, a particle is projected vertically upwards with an initial speed of 20 from a point above the ground. Find the time of flight of the particle. So, 
if it's projected from the ground and it's going to come back round to hit the ground again then I'll stop drawing that diagram there um, S is going to be equal to 0 V is also going to be a minus 20 at this point here because it's it's travelled up and down in the same motion and A here is going to be minus 9.8 we've projected upwards with a speed of 20 and acceleration is downwards so that's going to be um, minus 9.8 there. Find the time of flight of the particle well in this case here I'll probably just use V equals U plus AT in this case here so minus 20 equals 20 plus no, minus 9.8 T so if we add the 20 onto the right hand side add the 9.8 T onto the left hand side and then grab our calculators and do 40 divided by 9.8 we will get 4.08 now because we've used G or 9.8 to two significant figures we're going to have to round our answer to two significant figures so we get 4.1 seconds alright question 7 then a particle P is projected vertically upwards from a point X so we've got X here and the ground is beneath it, maybe. Uh, five seconds later, P is moving downwards with a speed of 10 meters per second. So five meters later, we've got 10 meters per second going downwards. Find the speed of projection. Well, we'll say that it's going upwards. It's projected vertically upwards to start with, so we know this direction is upwards. S, we don't know. U is U. V is minus 10 because it's now coming downwards. A is minus 9.8. And T here we know was 5 seconds later. So what are we going to use here? We're going to use V equals U plus AT. And in this case here we're going to get minus 10 equals U minus 9.8 eight times five okay so nine point eight times five is forty nine um, add that onto the other side and we're gonna get thirty nine so thirty nine was our initial speed part B here find the greatest height above X obtained by P during this motion well once it's reached maximum height V is going to equal zero here so S is what we want to find out, U is still 39 from their answer before, V is now equal to 0, and acceleration is still minus 9.8. So, um, what we need here is a bit of V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Uh, this is going to give us 0 on the left hand side, 39 squared is 1521 minus 2 times 9.8 which is 19.6 times s so s here is going to equal 1521 divided by 19.6 which gives us 77.6 now because we've used uh, g to two significant figures this is only going to be accurate to 78 meters to two significant figures Okay, so have plenty of practice on these questions on exercise C. As I say, these two questions here were relatively straightforward. Do have a go at the slightly more difficult problems in the exercise. Persevere through the difficult ones and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks for watching this video.